All right, what's up, everybody? Week 10, double digits of 11D's weekly update video. Um, yep, just right off the bat, if you want to subscribe to these videos, you can check out our YouTube channel. They all get posted there. And right up top, I do want to do a plug for the 11D meetup. They're looking for speakers. So if you have some 11D content that you think is interesting to the community, or if you just want to... I don't know, spitball an idea, talk it over with some folks, I'd really recommend um, submitting as a speaker for the meetup. Uh, everyone's very friendly, and uh, as it says right here, first-time speakers are definitely welcome. Um, over the weekend, we were <laughs> hunted on Product Hunt. Uh, hunted, yep. So, uh, yep, someone added us to Product Hunt, and we went to the number one product of the day yesterday, which was seems pretty cool. Um, so if you want to give 11D a bump, you could go out there on Product Hunt and upvote um, the 11D page there. Just a few quick community things um, right up top. Uh, I really like this build a calendar with 11D and CSS grid post from Brett DeWoody. Um, he has just a very straightforward example about how to generate a calendar with 11D server rendered markup. I thought it was great. Alexander had this great blog post about enabling design mode in 11D, so it really allows you to do some inline editing on your 11D site if you want. It doesn't persist anywhere, but it's useful when you're just tweaking things on your local development site. All right, next up we have a really great new 11D site from Salma, uh, unbreak.tech. Check it out, it's built with 11D. Mike posted this great tweet about how to create just a really small reduced tag list in 11D by iterating over your collections object. I thought it was a really great example. Check it out. Ryan Boone continued his series on creating 11D sites from the Notion API. Uh, so check out the latest installment of that. And Brett DeWoody posted this tweet about reducing Netlify build times with the Netlify cache plugin. And we do have an example of reusing 11D image disk cache specifically uh, on the 11D org on GitHub. So you can check out that if you want a uh, code example of how to do that on your build. Michael shared this great example of creating tag pages uh, on your blog and how to paginate those. Um, I thought it was a great gist. Uh, there's a couple different different files on that example, so check that out if that's a problem you're trying to solve. Quinn posted a blog post about how to host 11D on GitHub pages. Now, 11D does have on our docs a deployment section, and this one is now linked up also in the community tutorials. Um, so if you're looking for a way to deploy your 11D site to production, uh, check out our deployment section on the docs. So last week, uh, 11D Core went through some changes. We just shipped a 2.0 Canary 9 version. It has a bunch of different bug fixes and improvements built in. Um, we'll probably end up shipping a 1.0.2 this week that has some of those bug fixes included as well. Primarily this bug fix for liquid template argument parsing. Um, it looks like there was a condition in the argument parsing code where some of these arguments would be parsed out of order, um, which is not good. So we want that fix to go into the 1.0 the 1 uh, release branch as soon as possible. Uh, for the 2.0 release, we are going to require node uh, 14 and up. Node 12 just went end of life on April 30th, which was about a week ago, a little over a week ago. Um, and Canary 9 does enforce that um, for Node 14 minimum. Perhaps the most controversial thing that went into Canary 9 was that we removed the deprecated render data feature. Um, it's been deprecated for a long time. It's basically the exact same feature that you get from 11 d computed data. Um, and it was really the very first draft of that that never made it onto the docs. So um, I'd be surprised if a lot of folks were using it. Um, but this feature was removed in 2.0 Canary 9. And it should be very straightforward to migrate this code over to use uh, 11D's computed data feature moving forward. 
Uh, we shipped a new version of the 11D navigation plugin that adds a new allow missing option. Now this does show up on the docs now. You can check it out. So previous versions of 11D would throw an error when it couldn't find the node in your 11D navigation uh, filter. So for breadcrumbs, this created a problem when you're trying to use breadcrumbs on a page that um, is generating or feeding into the um, navigation structure. If you're having problems with uh, node not found errors on the 11D navigation plugin, definitely check out this uh, new allow missing option. And really the bulk of the work that happened last week was some internal refactoring around memory usage with the pagination feature. So pagination is really all about creating a bunch of different output files from a single input template. And previously in 11D, uh, for as far back as 11D has existed, it really created a separate instance of your data cascade for each output uh, file that's created for pagination. So if your pagination template output 10 different uh, output files from a single input template, you would really, in memory, 11D would store 10 different versions of the data cascade, one for each of those output templates. And obviously this is not a very uh, efficient use of memory. Uh, so what we've done in the new 2.0 Canary 9 version is that we're using JavaScript proxies um, to manage that crossover in a much more efficient way. So really you'll have your root pagination template will contain the reusable data cascade for all of those output templates. And really the only thing that's unique to the output template is the data that's unique to that output template. Any data that can be reused is now um, reused in an efficient way using that, that proxy feature. Um, so what does this mean for you? Uh, if you're using pagination to generate a lot of output files, you should see uh, a lot lower memory usage. You should see even faster builds from not having to keep all of that um, data cascade in memory. Um, so yep, a lot of performance improvements if, you're, if your site has a lot of uh, pagination, especially if you have some large data files that went into your cascade. Just some real world examples that came out of this. My personal Twitter archive, if you go to my website, um, and then click the little Twitter button on the side. Um, I have a Twitter archive, so everything I tweet gets a separate page. And this is all driven by the pagination feature in 11D. Um, so previous versions of this, so 2.0 Canary 8, I'm generating about 35,000 files, uh, and it took about 54 seconds. Um, and moving forward, Canary 9, uh, you, I saw a huge speed improvement because the well, the entire site was basically generated using the pagination feature. Uh, so it dropped down to 17 seconds instead of 54 seconds. So that's kind of the most extreme case of an improvement that you'd see because the entire site was generating using just uh, a single pagination template. So this is kind of an extreme case. You probably won't see this big of a, a speed bump by upgrading to 2.0 Canary 9, but if you are using pagination, you will see uh, performance improvements there. All right, so that's it for this week. If you all have anything you want to share for next week's video or questions that you want to ask me, uh, you can do so on the YouTube comments section, um, known for its high quality content. And you can also hit me up on Twitter, also known for its high quality content. Um, so yeah, hit me up and keep building, y'all.